done this before and it's the eagle atop the tree of peace is screaming a warning aka the feminine fire inside but I'm going to read some parts that I probably didn't read before and it's about the great tree of peace and the new world roots of American democracy it's no coincidence that the US Constitution strikingly resembles in both principle and form the great law of peace of the Six Nation Confederacy of the Iroquois League when the Founding Fathers looked for examples of effective government and human liberty upon which to model a constitution to unite the, the 13 colonies, they found in this new world society, not in Europe, usually considered the cradle of modern civilization, the great law of peace. The Confederacy arose centuries ago among separate warring communities as a way to create harmony, unity, and respect among human beings. Implicit in Iroquois political philosophy is commitment to the highest principles of human liberty. Iroquois law recognition of individual liberty and justice surpasses any European parallel. Now, there, there's, uh, the, there's the faith keepers and the uh, Onaga states the great law of peace includes freedom of speech, freedom of religion, and the right of women to participate in the government, separation of powers in the government, and checks and balances within the government are traceable to our Iroquois Constitution's ideas learned by the colonists. Now the central idea underlying the Iroquois political philosophy is that the peace is the will of the Creator, and the ultimate spiritual goal and natural order among humans, the principles of the Iroquois government embodied the great law of peace, which were transmitted historically of a figure called, to a figure called the peacemaker. His teachings emphasized the power of reason to assure righteousness, justice, and health among humans. Peace came to the Iroquois not through war and conquest, but through the exercise of reason guided by spiritual mind. The Iroquois League is based not on force of arms or rule of laws, but spiritual concepts of natural law applied to human society. Now the Iroquois in the US Constitution. By the time the Declaration of Independence was signed, the Iroquois had practiced their own government for hundreds of years. The Iroquois reputation for democracy and eloquence reveals they had securely evolved a sophisticated political system founded on reason, not on mere power. Accounts of these noble savages living in a natural freedom had inspired European theorists John Locke and others to expound ideas that had ignited the American Revolution and helped shape the new direction of government. But the Founding Fathers found their best work model for their new government not in the writings of Europeans, but through their direct contact with the Iroquois League for the great law of peace provided both model and incentive, incentive excuse me, to transform 13 separate colonies into the United States. George Washington, after a visit to the Iroquois, expressed great excitement over the Iroquois' two houses and the Grand Council. Ben Franklin wrote, It would be strange if I... If ignorant savages could ex execute a union that persisted ages and appears indissolvable, yet like a union is impractical for 12 colonies to whom it is more necessarily and advantageous. Um, at Cornell's conference, Dr. Donald Grind Jr. of Gettysburg College presented evidence that Thomas Jefferson adopted the specific symbols of the peacemaker legend. The tree of peace became the tree of liberty, the eagle clutching the bundle of 13 arrows, became the symbol of the new American government. Grine also brought the revelation that one of the framers, John Rutledge of South Carolina, chair of the drafting committee, read portions of the Iroquois law to the members of the committee. He asked them to consider the philosophy coming directly from this American soil. The great law of peace had laid out a government of the people, by the people, and for the people with three branches, similar to the U.S. presidency. Now, 
the biggest thing I'm going to get to on here is, I'm going to go down here. Um, the one thing that was left out, because there is separation in government. Um, um, we, they, have, they have three separations of governments, but here's the main thing on it. The, the Justice Department. One, why did the Founding Fathers choose to keep secret the original design of the U.S. government? One clue may be related to a major difference between the Iroquois versus the U.S. judicial branches. The Iroquoian women, the Supreme Court was entrusted to them. Clan mothers and women's council maintained the balance of power in their matrilineal society. Women nominated chief statements as political and religious leaders, lending a, a maternal insight into good leadership qualities. Their standards were set very high, while under the U.S. Constitution, qualifications of congressmen were limited to age, citizenship, and residency. Iroquois women, moreover, required all of the chief statements of the five nations must be honest in all things. They, they must not idle or gossip, but be men possessing those honorable qualities. Their hearts shall be full of peace and goodwill, and their minds filled with a yearning for the welfare of the people of the Confederacy. Women also held the power to impeach any leader who failed, after three warnings to serve the best interests of the people. If the Founding Fathers had disclosed the political powers of many Indian women, perhaps women like Abigail Adams, wife of of uh, President John Adams could have effectively assumed position as founding mothers. White women could have argued they deserved at least equal rights with American Indian women. In behalf of the people, women preserve title to the land through families and clans. This may be another facet of the Iroquois system which the founding fathers may have preferred not to make public. In contrast, women in the United States were not permitted the right to vote or the right to own land, much less to control over the system of justice. Iroquois women also maintain a sort of veto power to stop wars. If a woman across the land had known the truth about the power of the Indian women, the call for equal rights could have been heard earlier, and American history might have changed over the past 200 years. Now, the reason I'm saying this, because the U.S. Constitution, what our kids talking or, you know, are taught in school, it doesn't mention any of this. It, it may mention briefly about the Iroquois, but eventually they wanted to exterminate all of us, <clears throat> any Native American, because they wanted to enslave us. And we didn't make good slaves, so to the African Americans, well, they brought you in because you had no place to run and hide where the Indians did know how. And they did know how to fight back on their own land. Um, now, my aunt once told me, and um, now her mother, her grandmother, was on the Trail of Tears, and they escaped. And she was born along a river in Kentucky, and that's where they kind of hid. I mean, they literally hid for a long time. Um, my grandmother gave birth on a river to her three children. One was my mother. One was my aunt who raised me. And they kept their Indian heritage in their language. Um, now, what she told me, though, is that the um, government, she believed the government was still ran by Great Britain, and in a way it probably is, or the bankers or the corporations, because she said that white people were also enslaved, mainly, and, and this is her words, not mine, mainly Irish and Scottish, um, and, and she told me to research that somewhat, and I never did until last night, where I saw the wars of Harlan, um, Kentucky, about the coal mining. And that was a reservation. I mean, I don't know if it was DeWalt or DeBolt Coal. They owned those people. They didn't even have indoor plumbing. They were pretty much put on a reservation, no medical, and they did 18 hours in the coal mines. They and, and most of them died. They worked until they died. The families were then kind of banished if no one took them in. They barely had food. So, I And this would happen in the 60s and 70s and probably earlier than that. I just watched a documentary on that. 
So it is the bankers who are against us all. It's just that the, the Native Americans were here first and have been fighting it for a long time. And, um, and oh, my light came in. And we're still fighting it. And, and that's why I'm always asking you to join in because African Americans and poor white Americans who couldn't find a job were pretty much put on a reservation and, and slave laborers. They were slaves. Um, and that happened up until, I think, 1975, 1976. So in some of those coal towns in West Virginia, Kentucky, and all through there, um, they were slaves too. And, and the bosses would say, I own these people. So I'm going to leave a link to the one I saw in Kentucky. Um, tears just streamed down my face. It was horrible. Because uh, my aunt had told me about this, and I really never looked into it. I always... And I don't play victim, but I always thought it was the Native Americans. And I knew we were bad slaves, so they couldn't keep us as slaves. So they brought in African Americans. Um, you were you were displaced African Americans, and you didn't know this land. So it was hard for you to run, so you had to pretty much comply. And um, why the first settlers needed slaves and couldn't work themselves, I mean, because that's not an honorable living, you know, working off the backs of others. Nor is our government doing anything honorable right now by working off the backs of all of us and taking taxes which are voluntary and if we make a wage you shouldn't be able to tax a wage because we earned that so I just wanted to put this up there I mean it's just in respect to the Constitution and where women pay to play the great role and and that role was because they didn't want wars and now I've been reading headlines that US embassies are closing all over I don't know if this is like um, a distraction or a false flag is going to happen or whatever. Um, I don't know. I'm only where my journey takes me and um, and I can't read into the future. So um, I just wanted to put this out here though because I do love all of you and I think we can unite. And if we could just put some differences aside and unite, I think that we really could take on the empires. They're not as big as they seem. I watched those people in Kentucky take them on, and they did. And I've watched the American Indians, who they tried to depopulate us completely. Our numbers are coming back, and that's a good sign. Um, so I say procreate as much as you can if you want to conquer the imp empires. Have babies. And the reason they push abortion is because they want to deplete us so they can rule over us. Well, you can rule yourself. You're an adult. And and follow your heart. And love. And have empathy. Don't be apathetic. And if you see somebody that needs help, help them. And I love you all. Peace. Linda's out.